In this video, I'm going to be covering the requirements to build a security plus lab so you can do some practical training when studying for the CompTIA Security Plus, and particularly for the 601. My name is Andrew Ramdial, and I am the instructor here at TIA for the Security Plus. I'm also the one that created a lot of the video courses and the labs that you guys are probably studying if you're taking one of our classes. So let's get right into it. So when you're building a lab for Security Plus, there's going to be two main requirements, as it is in every computer that you're ever going to build, hardware and software. So in this video, I'm going to give you some of my recommendation on the type of hardware you're going to want to have when doing labs in particular. And then I'll tell you a list of software. I'll go through some software that you're probably going to need. Now, almost everything I'm going to tell you, almost everything, in terms of software is going to be free. Obviously, your hardware you're going to have to purchase. And I'm going to answer some common questions that people ask us when they sign up for our classes or when they're uh, building their Security Plus lab. So let's get right into it. So the first thing up we're going to start up with is hardware. Now, one of the things that people ask me is, Andrew, what type of processor should I have? Uh, how much RAM and hard drive should I have? So if you watched the course with me, you would have noticed or took the course with me, you'd have noticed that I, I did all the labs on just one computer, in particularly this machine. And I just want to show you the specs that I used on this computer. So here's the computer that I used to teach the entire class. And let's take a look at the specs on this machine. Now this machine, this particular machine was built only about six months ago. Uh, that means that I'm, I built this machine about August of 2020. And uh, this machine cost me about $1,800 with a video card, decently good video card. But if you're not, you know, if you're not playing games, you probably don't need that high-end video card. So you could probably bring this down to about $1,500. Uh, this machine has an, in a Core i7. Uh, it's the 10 Gen or the 10700 series there CPU. It could technically, it could be any i7 that probably came out in the in the last, I would say, four or five years is fine, even so, even something that old. Uh, 64 gigs of RAM. You notice I have a ton of RAM in there. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I am using Windows 10 Pro on this particular machine. So my hardware is uh, the latest of the Intel i7 processor. 64 gigs of RAM is what I'm basically using. And the, Win the Windows operating system. So... Let's go back and talk about hardware here. Now, the reason you're probably saying, wow, that's a lot of RAM. Now, when you're building labs, right, you're doing labs for Security Plus, and you, know, you could do this in building labs for A+, you're doing labs for Network Plus, and any other certification, including CEH. I use this machine to teach her a CEH class, but also, when you're doing, you're building a lab computer, you're going to be virtualizing a lot of machines. In particular, we use VirtualBox, so we virtualize a lot of things. We virtualize Kali Linux. I'll virtualize the, uh, three or four different versions of Windows. This can be it's going back all the way to Windows XP sometimes if I want to demonstrate an old hack. But we'll virtualize Windows 7. We'll virtualize Windows 8, Windows 10, and so on. So we're going to have a lot of virtualization running on our box. And I want to show you that really quickly. You see, on this machine here, we do have... VirtualBox. Oh, did it open up? Yes, it is. All right, so here's VirtualBox that I'm running, and you notice I have a whole bunch of virtual machines. So when you're running virtual machines, yeah, you're going to need a lot of RAM. So I would say when you're building your lab computer, try to get a lot of RAM. In my recommendations, at a minimum, and I'm saying just bare minimum, is 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, that's the minimum. I would not recommend anything under 8 gigs of RAM. Ideally, to do most of the labs in Security Plus or even the CEH class, uh, I would say 16 gigs. That'll give you enough RAM to run two or three virtual machines. You'll probably run some Kali. You'll run some Windows 7. You'll run some Windows 10. You'll run a server 2019 or something like that and 16 gigs of RAM. Do you need 64 gigs of RAM like I do? No. The reason I have that is because I teach many labs and sometimes I just keep keep them running over and over. Uh, so you don't necessarily need that much RAM. Ideally, I would say 
16 gigs, 32 is even better, 24 is good also. Uh, but uh, get at least 16, get at least 8 gigs, 16 is perfectly good. Now, let's talk about processor. When it comes to processor, the more cores, the better. The more cores allows you to allocate cores to these virtual machines. So if you can get six core processors, those are good. If you can get a, a four core at a minimum or quad core processors, whether you're going with Intel's or you're going with AMD's, it's fine. You're not looking for clock speed so much because what happens is we're not running these, we're not actually using these machines to do actual work. We're not using these machines to do massive computing. We're just running them up and trying different utilities on them. So any four core plus CPU will work. So keep that in mind would be a perfect thing. Now, the next thing I want to mention is going to be hard drive. When it comes to hard drive, without a doubt, you want a solid state hard drive. I do not recommend running things on a hard disk drive, or as I call them, old spinner drives. Spinner hard drives, those big ones, but even though they have big capacity on them, they're very slow. Running multiple virtual machines on one of these uh, spinner hard drives will slow your machine down to a crawl and halt. Now, when it comes to solid state, you could do SATA solid state or uh, M.2 drives is just fine. So if you have an NVMe drive, I think those are great to use. The NVMe, this machine has a one terabyte NVMe drive and I would run about six virtual machines with my 64 gigs of RAM with no problem. So I would recommend NVMe drives or even a SATA solid state, 16 gigs of RAM, and at least a four core processor when it comes to hardware. All right, so remember that. Now, the next thing is, let's talk about software. People say to me, Andrew, what am I, you know, what type of software are we gonna need? Ideally, you're gonna need a bunch of ISO images of operating systems. Let's take a look at the software that I'm using when, or I used when I recorded all the labs in it. So let's take a look here. So I have, first of all, you'll notice uh, that the software we're using is this little one here, with this little box on it, and this is called VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a virtualize, a free virtualization software that you can download and you can start virtualizing computers on it. VirtualBox um, is comparable to VMware. If you guys heard of VMware Workstation, ESX, and so on, VirtualBox is a great piece of software, amazing piece of software that you can get. We run all of our tools on it. Uh, so the first software you're gonna need is VirtualBox. Now the good thing about VirtualBox is that VirtualBox, you could download and install on a Mac or Windows. So if you have a Mac or Windows, you're good. Go and download it, just Google VirtualBox, you'll find it, download it, install it on your Mac or your Windows, and you'll have this. And then you can start creating virtual machines and you are going to, be installing all your all your images such as your windows or your kali linux or whatever that you're installing so the first thing we need is of course virtualbox the next thing you're going to need are images so what images are we going to be using now if you look here you'll notice that i used kali linux i used it windows 7 i used it windows 10 of course right Every, everybody should have that now and a server 2019. Those are basically all of the operating systems that I used. Now, Windows 10, you can actually download an ISO image from Microsoft. You don't necessarily need a key. You can just install it without the key, but then it expires in a few days. I think it's 90 days or it's 180 days. If you just get a trial of Windows 10, it's fine because remember, you're not using it for work. You're just trying different utilities on it. Server 2019 is downloadable. Once again, as a trial, just Google Server 2019 ISO trial. Download it, you can install it on your virtual box and this will give you the setup for the Windows server. Kali Linux is of course a free operating system as almost all Linux distributions are. You can go to Kali Linux. Now the good thing with Kali Linux is if you look on the website, they have a virtual box image that I generally just download and you just double click on it and it mounts it here. That makes it a lot easier. If not, you can just download it and install it. So Kali Linux, Windows 10, Server 2019. If you have those, you can do almost all the labs. Uh, the other thing that was that I did mention is Windows 7. Now, 
I used Windows 7 uh, only in the beginning of the course to run hacks against it because it's an older operating system. And because it was an older operating system, it allowed us to execute some hacks against it, some vulnerabilities against it. Uh, as it's Windows 10, those vulnerabilities were not there. You don't necessarily need Windows 7 or the image of it. If you can find it, it would be great. If not, don't worry about it. Windows 10 is just good enough. Okay, so that's going to be your software. So you should get images. Kali Linux, Server 2019, Windows 10 is all you need. Now, uh, when it comes to accounts, we do do a little bit of cloud computing. Uh, I would recommend going out and get an AWS account. Get an AWS account is free. If you, have, if you have an Amazon account, by the way, you just uh, go ahead to AWS, log in there, it'll activate. It takes about 24 hours for Amazon to activate that account. And you can actually start creating cloud machines in the AWS. Uh, cloud VMs, I should say VMs, or I should say VMs in the cloud. As you saw, I did in the videos. Now, those are basically all the software that I used because all the utilities that I used uh, throughout this entire class was basically off of Kali Linux. As you saw, most of the labs is done within Kali Linux itself. And of course, that's free, and I just executed against the actual Windows 10. Okay, so just a quick recap when it comes to hardware. When it comes to hardware, at a minimum, you're gonna get eight gigs of RAM, uh, ideally 32 gigs of RAM. Actually, 16, I should say, 16 gigs of RAM, Best would be 32. When it comes to processors, try to get at least a four core processor. Intel or AMD, doesn't matter. Uh, you wanna make sure you get a solid state hard drive. I do not recommend old fashioned spinners. Get a solid state NVMe drive or you can get a SATA hard drive, it's fine. When it comes to hard software, you need Windows 10 image, you need the Server 2019 image, you need the Kali image. You can download all these things for free. And then, of course, you need virtual box so you can set up your virtual machines. All right. This is all the things I used when we did the labs in the class. If you're going to be joining our classes soon, this is basically the software we use. As you go through our course, you'll see these labs. And hopefully, you enjoy this video. Hey, if you like what I'm saying, enjoy our videos. We'll be doing much more of these coming up soon. Give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next video.